Hey, I'm gonna put this real short and sweet. Me and my best friend are the only two guys to beat the Young Bucks in what, over a year? Then we get screwed over, but you know what? That's in the past, huh? Tonight, Wingman, J.D. Drake, Cesar, y'all gonna pay for us getting screwed over for the World Tag Team Championships. Sorry, boys. It just happens like that, you know what I mean? Hey, Wingman, bienvenido a la casa de Penta. Aquí te voy a cortar tus alas. Y esta noche, nosotros, my best friend, y yo, te vamos a hacer el makeover a ti. Penta says, tonight, welcome to Casa de Penta. Wingman, I'm gonna clip your wings. And tonight, it's you who are gonna get a makeover, courtesy of me and my best friend. Cero! Jake the Snake joining us. And I've been eating barbecue all day. <laughs> we're in Texas, and we're bringing you elevation, and we go down to Justin Roberts. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Hearn, Watch Texas, out. weighing 273 <laughs> pounds, the Murder Hawk Monster. I didn't give him any barbecue. Archer. <laughs> Hey. I, I think he's acting like he missed out on some hey, barbecue. He miss out on it. I wouldn't give him any. Well, that's just me, Jake, <laughs> sending that guy to the ring hungry like that. Well, I think he's going to make his own. <laughs> no well, doubt about it. Murder Hawk looks like he's in rare form right now. And he's got that Texas death match coming up on Wednesday night. Exactly. For the oh. IWGP U.S. Championship and John Moxley. We've been working on some things, man, that you've not seen yet, and they're ugly. Well, I bet. I know, Jake, you've been in many Texas death matches before. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Look at this, Paul. My God! Oh. We've got to admit, Lance Archer, wow. Just the power. That was an aggressive choke slam with authority. He is so hungry to get what he so deserves. I agree. He looks focused and determined, Jake. He's got him razor sharp right now. He uh, is. He's got an attitude about it. And um, he has a right to have that attitude. He's been given a raw deal. The blackout. Here it comes. Oh. That was done with love. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> the well, guys, I'm monster. not gonna give that boy some barbecue. Please, do it. Please yeah. feed him and calm him down. <laughs> it's for the IWGP US title this Wednesday, live on Dynamite in a Texas death match. I'm next on Elevation Tag Team Action Chaos Project versus Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. This is a tag team contest scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way to the ring at a combined weight of 430 pounds, Luther Serpentico Chaos Project. Well, you talk about unique individuals, Tony. Luther Serpentico. Never seen anything like it, have we, in AEW? I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, period. I, no, I agree. That's because we have seen Dr. Luther, who is a deathmatch legend, use his partner as, as a, a weapon. As a weapon, as a battering ram. That's just creepy.
combined weight of 388 pounds, the team of Chuck Taylor and freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. What a crew. Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor together. There you see Wheeler Utah come out with them and Chris Statlander as well. And freshly squeezed, who, by the way, you're talking about some bad blood. Orange Cassidy and the Blade. Wow. And those two will face off coming up live when we are at Fighter Fest 2 in Dallas, coming up on Wednesday night on TNT. And I think Orange Cassidy would be the first to say, if in fact he would say anything, is that he's had enough of the brass nuts. He's had enough of the use of the foreign objects from the blade. And we'll see what comes to light coming up on Wednesday, Paul. I definitely think that Orange Cassidy definitely has something in store for the blade. As calm and as chill as Orange Cassidy presents himself, we both know that there's one hell of a competitor there. He's something else. All right, here we go. Chuck Taylor will start things against Serpentico. The Kentucky gentleman, if yeah. you will. Yeah. He's anything but a gentleman if you get him going and uh, well. Oh yeah, he's being here to stepped on snake when he gets mad. A little single leg pickup attempt that time. <laughs> Chuck over the top. Serpentico showing some quickness as we've seen so many times. Which he needs to use to stay alive. What an arm drag. Chuck Taylor really sucked that in deep. Chan of Chucky e. T from the fans here. Chucky e. T, I like that. There you go. That's catchy. That's like a T-shirt. Okay. <laughs> and here comes Dr. Luther. Yeah. The strange one. Boy, is he. You know, we we talked so much. We saw an, an amazing coffin match on Wednesday night. We we called Darby Allen an enigma. Luther's in the same mold that you just you can't explain him. You can't explain. Him. I mean, you got to look at him. He's the original death dealer, Tony. Yeah, he's something else, man. He's he's just odd. In '90s in Japan. Vicious matches. Once feuded with the original Sheik. That squeaky voice, though. Right now, Orange Cassidy is fighting to keep Luther out of his pockets. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd say that? In a I don't think I'd ever say that in a million years. <laughs> this is awkward for everyone. Oh my. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, Anybody going to put the hands in your pocket is going to be yourself. Well, you should hope. No. You know, maybe somebody will tell private party that about Matt Hardy. Yeah, good call. Serpentico. It's <laughs> got to be so frustrating to see a guy like Orange Cassidy who just makes it look so easy. Back body drop. Tags with the foot. <laughs> I love it. Chucky T in with a shoot off to Serpentico. Where Chucky e. Tree and Trent have made up best friends. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, you just gotta, gotta enjoy it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, Orange Cassidy just comes out and has fun. Chucky e. T taking a big boot to the gut by Dr. Luther. Yeah, and the fans have fun too. Watch, look at that. What's the name of that? That shows that flexibility and athleticism, Dr. Luther there. You know, he's just such an incredible talent with experience of just being vicious and that voice just creeps me out drop to hold on his partner for a headbutt or Sepentico here we go yeah. the battering ram about two of those Sepentico says no 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 but it was too late tell you Sepentico is tough yes he is well, you mentioned Matt Hardy and you mentioned the hands in the pocket. Certainly the blade is part of Matt Hardy's and Hardy's family office. And that match with Arch Cassidy coming up on Wednesday, just kind of the tip of the iceberg and the problems that the best friends have had against the Hardy family office. What do we got here? Showing thumbs down to Arch Cassidy. Here we go. Grabbing the mask and just <laughs> You know, it's funny, Tony. I heard a rumor that Serpentico has a degree in astrophysics. Really? And to think that his body's being used like a battering ram. Cover. Right. Chucky e. T with a big kick out. I like calling him Chucky e. T. I really do. 
Chuck Taylor, the Kentucky gentleman. There That's you go. Right. Great. Let me get back on track here. This amazing crowd has me twisted in my words. Great tag here made. And here's uh, again Luther calling the shot. Look at this. He sends Luther in. And Chuck using the speed, picking him up. Nice. Good counter by Chuck Taylor to get out of that situation. Cannon balled him into the middle turnbuckle and just a just, slow reach. Just like you wonder if Orange Cassidy heart beats about 22 beats a minute. It's, if it's doing nothing, it's mixing up Dr. Luther here. Boom! With the sunglasses, then the DDT, two, and a save by Serpentico. But you look at psychology from the style, he baits you in with the slow, the slow, the slow, and then Orange Cassidy changes gear yep. and throws in a tornado DDT. Absolutely. Serpentico trying to get Luther back to the corner. Turns on the juice. Beach break coming up here. No. Had him up for it that time. Oh, great thrust kick that time by Serpentico. And now up on top, did he tag Luther in? He did tag Luther. Okay, a tag was made on the other side with uh, Chuck Taylor. Serpentico, step up kick, and then a big clothesline. The boys. I think oh. he's got his own language, to be honest with you. Oh. That hurts in any language. It does. That translates everywhere. Knee. Nice. Big high knee by the Kentucky gentleman. Knee Chuck left, Hill. and he's going to send Serpent to go on to his partner. Caught. Luther doing what he does best. He's, is he trying to hit the referee? <laughs> I don't know. He's inside. Oh, orange punch. It wobbled him. I think he's out on his feet. He covers his own partner. The orange punch took him out. One, two, three. No winners of this match. Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. Well, I mean, if it's there, why not use it? <laughs> Some things you see, Paul, and then you, you don't believe in and whatever, right? I don't believe. I don't know how to talk about it. I don't know how to describe it. it That's something I want to erase from our mental Rolodex. <laughs> it was a massive pin. Beautiful tornado DDT here by Orange Cassidy. That orange crush turned into a front slam and then a photo opportunity with a pinfall. And poor Serpenta goes on the bottom, still not getting any respect. Not again. The people, what they want. And Serpenta is still down. And so is Luther. Oh, uh, there's nothing like love. Hang on a second. Oh, here we go. There's your favorite, Tony. Yeah, here comes Blade and that psycho bunny. Oh, he's in. I mean, you've got best friends lining up, daring him to come in the ring. And he has got those brass nuts ready to go. And he's telling Arch Cassidy that on Wednesday, they're going to come into play. Calling his shots. That's what mercenaries do. It's happening Wednesday night live on TNT. <laughs> wow, elite general manager, huh? The greatest wrestler of all time, getting his hands on his own professional wrestling game where I create the cards. This is my universe. We have a challenger online. What would a layman know about professional wrestling, huh? Is there is clearly some bugs in the system or something. I'm not, I don't lose. I've got every belt in the universe. How am I losing in this game? Think you have what it takes? Prove it with AEW Elite General Manager. Draft your favorite AEW wrestlers and book your own shows from week to week. Download AEW Elite General Manager. Available now on iOS and Android. Women's competition next here on Elevation. Former champion Hikaru Shida in singles competition. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching a ring from Kanagawa, Japan, Hikaru Shida. Phenomenal record, former AEW Women's World Champion. 
She has not lost a step since she was dethroned by Dr. Britt Baker. She's actually picked up her step or two. She's become a lot more aggressive in her offense as we've seen lately here on Elevation. Very aggressive. And her opponent, Dulce Tormenta. Dulce Tormenta, who's making her AEW debut, comes from a famous wrestling family with the brothers Triton, Ray, Lagarto, El Torano, all successful luchadors. From the state of Texas. And it should be a very interesting and good matchup because one thing that Hikaru Sheet has been able to do is to adapt because you got so many different styles of wrestling in the women's division. Well, that just shows why she was AEW champion for as long as she was, that ability to adapt and overcome. You know, and it's yeah. good to see somebody like her talent get in there and work with people like Dolce. I mean, you know, this is her first, you know, chance to compete here in AEW, and she's competing against one of the best. Not afraid at all, not intimidated. I was like, give me a little space, young lady, give me a little space. Foot to the gut. Tormenta hits the ropes and ducked. Nicely done that time. And great counter. Shido arm whips her down that time. Both arms. Nice running high knee by Hikaru. Really sunk that knee in there. Yeah. I, really, her knee is her best weapon. She's dangerous, definitely dangerous with her leg strikes and her knee strikes. You use that Tamashi, that running knee strike she used to win matches, she uses other ones too. The, watch out. Up and over. Nice block. Nice shoulder to the gut. Shows a little bit of flexibility there. That was impressive. Absolutely. Climbing the top now. Here's Tormenta. Trying to get her balance. Oh, crossbody. So yeah. It looks like she missed the crossbody and grabbed an arm on yeah. the way by. That was nicely done. Yeah, that's literally thinking on your feet or in the air. Way to improvise. Here she comes again. No, too she, long on that one. Hikaru saw that one coming. Wow, step up in Zaguri, and that was timed perfectly that time by the former women's world champ. Rolls her up. Breaks free, and there's the knees across the two. And a two count. Going Missed the knee katana. that time. Yeah. Trying the katana. You're right. Good call. Oh, man. Setting on the small of the back here. Great finding the legs. Look at this. And pushing up on her. Great pinning combo right yeah. here. Really? There she's. I don't know. Can she get up? Whoa. She just got that left hand free that time, Paul, barely. That was a good core strength by Hikaru Shida there, able to twist her core to get that shoulder off the mat. Here's Tormenta. Missing. Rolled up by Shida. Shida ducks again. Back elbow, and it stunned the former world champion. Here comes, oh, there's the running knee that time. Sheeta going to try to hoist her up. Look at this. Look at the power. Wow, power showing Shida. some strength. Sheeta. Boom, face first. One, two. No. Oh, she was celebrating too soon that time, Paul. Yes, yeah, she sure was. Sometimes those show off covers can't get it done. She's setting up here. I think Akara was setting up here for the katana. There it is. Katana caught her right on the shoulder. One, two, three, and it wins it. The winner of this match, Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida gets the win. It is her 35th win in her AEW singles career. Amazing. That's impressive. All right, everyone, don't ever say that we don't give you anything because we've got an inside scoop here. Last week, we said we were taking Jade Cargill to Hollywood. Well, this week, we brought Hollywood to her. This is a first-time meeting. We, we deliver here. 
at the hashtag Jade Brand, and I am introducing, for the first time, the head of film and television at Activist Artist Management, John Kanak, to Jade Cargill. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we wanted to talk. I know you have ambitions in film and television. Yes, I do. And I understand you love the Marvel Universe. You love DC. Love it. Love it. Storm. A, yes. I see that. Look so it it's a great time to be athletic, uh, you know, from a diverse background in Hollywood. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. So exactly. Perfect. The process really is Hollywood's a business of relationships. Right. Come out to LA. We set you up with meetings. The pandemic's, you know, starting to slow down. People are meeting in person now. We want you in the room with the right people. Acting coaches, casting directors, production executives, producers, directors, everything. Uh, start building up your Rolodex of relationship, get you in with the right acting coaches, start getting you in the right meetings. And, you know, it's a marathon, but we want, you know, we see a lot of potential for you, especially in the action star space. So we'd love to see what we can do. <laughs> I knew it. I told you. John, here you go. This is my card. Thanks, Mark. I think this is going to be great. Likewise. Thanks a lot. It's nice to meet you. You too. Thanks. I'm next on Elevation in singles competition, Powerhouse Hobbs. This contest is set for one fall. Introducing first from Black Rock, Connecticut, weighing 215 pounds, Lucas Chase. Chase, a member of the Rhodes Wrestling Academy from the natural Dustin Rhodes. But B -b 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 he's kind of going against the biggest. From East Palo Alto, California, weighing 270 pounds, Power House Hobbs. Boy, he is a powerhouse. He had a spine buster last week on elevation that was unbelievable. And here he comes with Hook and the new FTW champion. How about that ruse they pulled on Brian Cage? Well, they definitely had a great plan and they did execute it, but I'm sure that's not the last we're going to hear from Brian Cage no. on that subject. Absolutely. So the Taz can say there's problems within the Team Taz, and we've settled those problems. I guess in a way they have settled family business. Look at that. They, they cut a family right out of the right out of the groups. Like they cut a cancer out in their mind. All right, very tentative here. Lucas Chase. Look at the viciousness on Powerhouse Hobbs. Just, just has such disdain for his opponents. Chase hitting the... Oh, oh, wow. That's what you call running into a wall. Yeah, he was. He just flattened him like a Mack truck. So explosive how Hobbs stepped into that. The FTW World Champion Ricky Starks on the outside. Hobbs. There's that spine buster. The big spine buster. One, two, three. Here is your winner, Powerhouse Hobbs. He calls it town business. <laughs> well, I definitely don't want to go to, to do business in that town. Look at that. Here it is. Just the height and the elevation he gets on that spine buster is unreal. Ricky Starks with the marketing already. He elevates everyone around him. Stay tuned, coming up next, the elite hunter himself, Frankie Kazarian in singles action. Contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Echo Valley, California, weighing 210 pounds, Frankie Kazarian. Talk about an experienced veteran. Frankie Kazarian is definitely one of the top here in AEW. Nobody like Cats, buddy. The elite hunter, if you will. He definitely is an elite hunter. I really like what this guy does in the ring. This way he handles himself and executes himself. He's just such a pro. And we go back to Justin Roberts. 
His opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 209 pounds, Baron Black. Good look at Baron Black, who we all have a lot of respect for and a lot of praise about. The young athlete still looking for his first win. Frankie Kazarian, by the way, Tony Khan has signed another big match coming up for our second night of Fighter Fest in Dallas, coming up this Wednesday at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland. Frankie Kazarian, the elite hunter, will take on a member of the elite, Big Doc Luke Gallows. That should be one heck of a match. Man. The intensity of Kazarian and the size and power of Gallows. The viciousness of Gallows, too. I've known him a long time. He's one, he likes putting the hurt on somebody. We have seen Kazarian take his shots at, at the elite, helping the elite lose matches or going at the elite. And so you know that they're going to have some sort of plan for Frankie Kazarian just to get him in the ring. Well, I think the elite always has a plan. I mean, that's probably stating the obvious. But sure. You would like to think that for once we would get a nice straight up yeah, right. confrontation between Frankie Kazarian and Luke Gallows, but you know, I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah, Maybe man. the day before, but not yesterday. Good shot by Baron Black. Looks yeah. like uh, Baron Black's tired and want to get his own W here. There you go. Nice European uppercut. Good chop. Using those big hands that Baron Black has. Light Frankie's chest up, spinning uh -huh. Larry in the corner. How about that by Baron Black? And Black with a great move and a cover. One. Out of that. You got to figure it's got to happen soon for Baron Black. Sure you know it. it. Yeah. But then again, you look at the opponents that Baron Black's gone after. He's gone after some pretty top talent. Absolutely has. You know what? He won't back down from him. That says a lot about his character. Absolutely. He says, you book him and I'll take him on. And how about that? A backstabber by Baron Black. Have boots, will travel. Kazarian having trouble getting to his feet here. Baron Black perched. And here he goes. Oh, I saw that coming. A little bit. That was, that, that was that veteran wiseness of Frankie Kazarian there. Saw that coming. Let Baron Black step into it. Good wow. flying forearm. Flying forearm shot and now a back elbow from Kazarian. Reversal, Baron Black charges in. No one home. Kazarian runs wow. right over him. Wow, he brought that, Larry. He swung back from Nebraska when he brought that one all the way through. The elite hunter looking for his 20th win in 2021, and there he's got him tied up. Yep. Rear naked choke. Chicken wing. Here is your winner, Frankie Kazarian. The chicken wing. Kazarian is primed and ready, if I can use that cliche, for Luke Gallows. Doc Gallows. Oh, Lord, we got trouble. What is that mess? Turn around, Frankie. Oh. Wow. What an idiot. He's an idiot for wearing them sneakers. He tripped on the way in. He wanted to do something cute. He... They sent him out. The elite sent their stooge out to take care of the elite hunter. Poor Brandon Cutler. Do right. your own work, guys. Don't send it. Associate Stooge. I don't even think he's reached. I don't think he's reached Stooge status yet. He's still an associate. Pick him up, hit him again. Several more times. Why okay, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He grabs the uh, the coolant. I guess that's what you call it. The cool spray. You ever had any of that sprayed on you? No, I've never been cool. Okay, and hey, by the way, eat this. Brandon Cutler. <laughs> a, little, a little down there just in case. Yeah, just in case you, you're overheated. Yeah. Frankie Gazarian gets the win ready for the elite. Whatever they have to bring on Wednesday night live on TNT. I don't know. Frankie Gazarian's kind of enjoying what's going on. Uno Mas, one more. I'm for it. I'm for it. Poor Brandon Cutler can't even see where he is. Because <laughs> oh, uh, there ain't better Hold turn. on, hold on, hold on. It's Doc Gallows. It's the big goal with a big pump kick. Big pump kick. 
This was all a ploy. I guess they thought Cutler could get it done, and now they send out Gallows. Gallows is going to send his own message. Gallows and Kazarian on Wednesday night. If Kazarian can make it. Well, I'm sure he's going to be ready. What a battle that's going to be, man. That big monster is ready to go. But your winner, Frankie Kazarian, now he and Gallows will hook it up Wednesday night live on TNT. Now there's four because the fifth couldn't make it. We have a new FTW champion in absolute Ricky Starks, a leader, a team player. You see, Brian, when you don't cooperate, things happen. You got laid out last week on Dynamite. So listen to these words. Stay home. Don't come back. Because if you do, the same thing is going to happen again. Up next on Elevation, you don't want to miss this one. Singles competition and Helico versus Jungle Boy. This match set for one for all with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 205 pounds on Helico. And I'm telling you, Tony, I love this Angelico guy. I really do. He's one of those guys that he's in his own world, doing his own thing, catching the wind, baby, just trying to catch the wind. Well, absolutely, when the bell rings, there's a lot to love about him. Because he is a talented professional who has certainly made his mark here in AEW, and now a member of the Hardy family office. And I just love the dude, man. He's just, just vibing. He's got a private party with him. Those guys can have fun anywhere. Well, get ready for an eruption here in the arena. Jungle style. And his opponent from Valley Village, weighing 168 pounds, Jungle Boy. Tony, I need a dinosaur to carry me to the ring. <laughs> that I would like to see. So would I. This is a hell of an entrance, guys. Jungle Boy and Angelico in a one-on-one -on -one match up here on Elevation. What a reaction. You know what? Well earned. I mean, the, the kid had a phenomenal match recently against Kenny Omega. He's going to become a champion in AEW in a short span, I really, really believe. Oh, without a doubt. He's got so much talent. What's y'all saying? He's got so much charisma. Ah, uh, he's got it all, man. Yeah, he does. And the fans just get into him. I mean, how can you not like a guy that's got his own pet dinosaur? There you go. Not many of us can say that. No. Luchasaurus brought him out, and now with Bryce Rensburg, the referee, there's the big guy. And boy, you can see Private Party staying away from him. As they should. I think Luchasaurus is out here just to keep things honest. A week ago here on Elevation for Jungle Boy, a win over Lee Johnson, his 51st victory, which is an AEW high. Most wins by a wrestler. And only turned 24. Last month. 24 years old and already grizzled. I yeah. love it. Yes, sir. All right. Starts with a side headlock on Helico. 
A little crazy. I don't know if Van Helico's a guy I'd get any part of my body close to unless it was a strike. Good move by Jungle Boy. Well, he's, going going for the, he's going for that trap. Yeah, snare the, trap. Going for that snare trap already. And then Helico right away knew he was in trouble and got to the ropes. Yeah, Jungle Boy's letting him know it was this close, jump. This close. Private party over chirping at the referee that time. And they saw Bryce Rimsburg give them an earful. They don't want to chirp too loud. They'll get Luchasaurus' attention. Yeah, buddy. Now they're chanting Luchasaurus' name, and here comes Angelico. Full arm drag and twists. And a good counter that time by Jungle Boy. You know what I like about Jungle Boy? Well, there's, God, there's a million things I like about Jungle Boy. One of the things is, is how confident he is at such a ripe young age. That's the grizzled part that I talk about yeah. with Jungle Boy. I talk about him being grizzled. He doesn't wrestle like a guy that's 24 years old. He's got the calm, the composure, and the character of a really seasoned veteran. In AEW, with over 50 wins, he is one of AEW seasoned athletes and competitors. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Even though he is young in years, he is rich in wins. Rich in wins and wise in experience. Wise in experience. And there's Angelico trying to break. Yeah, look how Angelico is so smart to break that waist lock by hitting the wrist. Right. Jungle Boy's not going to hang around for all that nonsense. He's going to get out of that as quick as he can. Jungle Boy just content here with, well, I was thinking just to wrestle him, but now there's a there's a strike, open palm strike, bouncing off the ropes, holding on the arm, and then with a big drop kick, Jungle Boy. And that's why the AEW fans love him. That athleticism is just so raw. And Helico right now is on Club Street trying to figure out where he is. On Club Street. And he comes clubbering back. Grab the hair to get the side headlock advantage. And now here's Jungle Boy. Send him in. Down goes. Leapfrog. Put the brakes on. Oh, man. And Helico. Great counter that time. And he hit him on his knee. And I think maybe. He fell on his knee as well on the floor that time. Jungle Boy might have hurt himself a little yeah. bit there. There you see how big Angelico is standing next to one of the biggest in Lucha Swords. Angelico showing his size as well, if you compare yeah. him to. That ranginess that Angelico has, those long limbs, long legs, which he uses to his advantage every time, applying those multitude of holds that he knows. I wonder how a guy keeps all those holds straight in his mental Rolodex. They just come naturally. And he'll go four-time AAA World Tag Team Champ with Jack Evans, TH2. Oh, uh, here we go. Looks like Luchasaurus and the referee falling for a little bait and switch here. Luchasaurus. He's drawing the prize, Luchasaurus. Got over there a little too late that time, but that's not going to stop him. Private party needs to be real careful. They're not becoming dinosaur food. Look at him run behind security. Of course. Please stop. Oh, my fence chop down on the floor. And Helico absorbed both of them that time and then shoots a knee into the midsection and then head first into the steel of the ring post. Still. Jungle Boy, you see, reaching for that left knee, Paul, right as Angelico got into the ring, trying to pull himself up. Well, sometimes you can get a sprain on the outside. Hopefully he can work that out and overcome that. It's not a good thing when you've got a guy as athletic as Jungle Boy that's got a wheel problem. Right. Slowly makes his way back in the ring. Rolls him up. Good counter move. One, two. And almost slipped in a win that time, but got a face first of elbow. It just shows the planning on Angelico's part, too. His finish is the Navarro death roll. Right. Which locks up those legs and knees. And right away when he attacked Jungle Boy's knee, he's kind of laying his work out for the future. Hopefully at some point, I think he's going to try to apply that Navarro death roll. In his mind, I'm thinking he's thinking, hopefully. Got a big long elbow right in Jungle Boy's chin. Nice cover, good kick out by Jungle Boy. And continuing now to 
hammer that leg. Actually, I don't know if it's the shin here that he's working on. I'm, I'm just the ankle. Well, right now the arm. Now here, here's the leg. Here it comes the Navarro death roll. I do believe, but he got tied up in the ropes. Jungle Boy reaching, reaching, and well, and Helico using the ropes to push him back. You can see that, it clearly there. That's that long limit advantage that Helico has, just pushing Jungle Boy away from the ropes. Every time Jungle Boy tries to scoot closer, good reach, Jungle Boy. Smart move on on Helico's part, man. I'm telling you, stay in the hold. You got a five count to break it. Hold it to four and a half. Can't get in trouble at four and a half. Anytime you can apply that pressure on that already injured knee works to Angelico's advantage. Jungle Boy pulling himself up. Meets him with a back elbow and a right cross and a knife edge and another one. This shows that heart that Jungle Boy has. He comes out of the corner firing. And goes to the legs of Angelico. Here he goes again. Second win for the young man. Boom! With a running lariat. That's that adrenaline and fire. Jungle Boy's hurting right now, but he's pulling deep. Pulling deep and San Angelico spinning. Just hobbling over to the point of attack again. And they chant Jungle Boy here in the arena. Pick up. Cover. One, two. Whoa, not yet. Great cover by Jungle Boy, hooking both legs, using all the leverage he could, arching back. As you can tell, that knee right now is giving Jungle Boy a little bit of trouble in the ring. And Helico is a great veteran, too. Over 500 matches in 16 different countries. Pick up. Good go behind. Russian leg sweep coming. No, he rolls him through. Try to get one, one two, and three. So close for Angelico. Oh, the way he trapped Jungle Boy up. I think Jungle Boy is trying to figure out what he was in and where to kick out. Absolutely. And Helico thought for sure there, Paul, was a win, and it was damn close. Defensively, gets the foot up. Whoa. Wow. Couldn't block that one. Such a long strike. Yeah, they, those work. And there's that long leg getting caught. Jungle Boy takes advantage of it. And Helico is caught. Those long legs are working against him now, Tony. He's, got that leg trapped. He's caught in the tree of, whoa, my goodness. I see what you did there. Thank you. And the prelude to the snare trap. And Helico's in trouble now. Brace Redford right there and he taps. Now that's pretty cool. Jungle Boy made Angelico, who is known for submission holds. Look at that vicious Larry turn. Angelico inside out, the tree of woe. Right here we're in the snare trap. Jungle Boy's got it hooked in deep, elbow under the chin. Fingers locked, skeletal grip. And Angelico has no choice but to tap out. Jungle Boy now working on his second 50. He has 52 wins into his career. And he and Luchasaurus celebrate here on Elevation. Who's the champion? We the champion. I the champion. We the champion, Sam. Show me the stage. We came to work. Talk to hit him where it hurts. Champions coming first. Because we don't know no second place. I'm the one that set the pace. Roll one and elevate. Celebrate, we've been winning so long, maintain so strong, others could hold on. Who's the champion? We're the champion. I'm the champion. We're the champion, Sam. In women's action, Julia Hart of the Varsity Blondes will face Red Velvet. Time to stir it up. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Bloomington, Minnesota, Julia Hart. You know, we talk about charisma and how important it is and excitement. She brings a lot of that. Does Julia Hart to the ring? 
This is one fired up team right here. Hey, I agree, man. It, it, it didn't take the varsity blondes long to develop a great reputation here in AW and to develop a great win record. Cream always rises to the top. Straight out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet. Great young athlete, Red Velvet. Well, stir it up, Paul. Straight out of your mama's kitchen. Absolutely. I love the fire that Red Velvet has. Such a great competitor, such a great athlete. All around great AEW competitor. Look at that, look at that charm and charisma right there. Both these young ladies have won five of their last six singles matches. So we got two hot competitors here, record-wise. Going at it, great tie-up to begin things. And Rick knocks the referee assigned to this one. Red Velvet taking that arm right away. Nice athletic ability by Julia Hart with that nip up. Yeah, great balance from the young lady, but there we go. Red Velvet's like, right back at you and give me that wrist back. Now she has the fingers bent and the wrist locked. Right. Well executed by Red Velvet. Cartwheeled out of it that time. Oh. If you can do it, I can do it better. I love this. Nice side headlock. Try to control the tempo a little bit. I think Red Velvet got to stand out. Look at that athleticism. The splits and the splits. Well, I'm just split on who to root for. Uh, well, is that bad? No, that's okay. not. Realistically, we shouldn't root for. True, but I can't help it. I still pick my favorites. And this is pretty impressive so it, far. It is. It's, it's impressive by both young ladies here. Good look at our crowd here. Good to have you with us. Oh, there's some, some sports womanship. Yeah, thank you. We head towards another great night of Dynamite live on TNT on Wednesday night. We got Rampage coming up beginning on the 13th of August on a Friday on TNT live that night at 10 o'clock Eastern. I might have escalated a little bit that back elbow. I think yeah. Red Velvet took exception to that. Yeah, things have kind of gone downhill sportsman wise since the handshake, Paul. Yeah, he's got competitive pretty quick. Yeah. Wow, a nice high single drop kick right on the button. Hit Julie Hart right in the chin with that one. Red Velvet turned her attention away, and Julia Hart with a split grabs the head, forces her down. It's like a chit spin, uh, chin buster, maybe. Wow. She sunk that in. Julia Hart with that cartwheel lariat in the corner. Cartwheel lariat, you don't see that much. Of course, not many can do it, right? Absolutely. And Bulldogs are down. And a bulldog into the split. And she doesn't even try for a pin here. Standing boots, salt from Julia Hart. One, only a one. No, he got a two that time. Good aggressive kick out by Red Velvet. Red Velvet trying to fight up from underneath here. Julia Hart, that front face lock. Good chunk off by Red Velvet. Julia Hart reaches deep with that one. Those kicks right to the short ribs really take the wind right out of you. Well, they they both collided that time and both wobbling on that. But here comes Velvet exploding out of the corner and again. She's how fast Red Velvet is, how she changes gears. Julia Hart sent her in. Velvet just lured. You could see that coming, man. Lured her in. Lured her in, bed and switch. You know, I don't think Julia Hart had all of her faculties on that one. Right. Here comes Red Velvet, watch out, Tope Suicida, and she connects with Brian Pillman on that. Well, Pillman was trying to be a gentleman. Chivalry's not dead, it's just sick. <laughs> and one, two, and a two count. Let's take a look again. Wow, she really hit Brian, Brian, Brian Pillman Jr. right into the railing. He didn't sign up for that, I guarantee you. 
Wow, nice kick by Julia Hart. Yeah. Really stuck Red Velvet in the chin on that one. She was aiming for Julia Hart that time, and Pillman was just kind of in the way. It's all right, he's a big boy. He can shake it off. And here goes Julia Hart with a spinning dive. One, two, no. I love to see Red Velvet kick out. She uses her whole body to kick out. Such an impressive kick out. Takes great core strength to be able to do kickouts like that. Forearm shot by Hart, hits the ropes. Spinning forearm to the chest. Red Velvet locking that wrist again. Look how that wrist is locked. Oh, wow. well done. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Red Velvet. Well, it wasn't the just desserts that she's famous for, that running knee strike. I don't know if that looked like a slice of cake to me. Look at the way Red Velvet locks the wrist and then swings through with that leg scissor. Really torques the neck, throws Julia Hart right in the mat. And that was all set up by the proper execution of locking that wrist. Great another job, win. Red Velvet. Absolutely, another win for Red Velvet. By the way, her 20th win overall. Up next on Elevation Tag Team Action, Big Shotty Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson versus the Gun Club, Billy Gunn and Colton Gunn. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 400 pounds, the team of Brock Anderson and Big Shotty Lee. Johnson! Tony, you don't know how surreal it is right now for me to be talking and seeing Nick Brock Anderson make his way down to the ring. I remember holding that guy when he was about two years old. Isn't that a shot in the teeth? Yeah, it's a shot in the teeth, big guy. You are exactly right. He and Shotty Lee Johnson together. Hey, this is going to be a great matchup. I'm looking forward to this one. And glad you're with us here on Elevation this week. Because we're going to go back to Justin Roberts. And their opponents from Orlando, Florida, at a combined weight of 486 pounds, Colton and Billy, the Gun Club. <laughs> oh, love this. Billy, that broad smile at Colton. You know, this is really killing me. I, I remember when Colton was small, too. Like, I'm, re I'm really getting kicked in the teeth. Well, Paul, I need to lace my boots up. It happens quickly, man. Yeah, it does. Blink of an eye. Yeah. All the miles I've been up and down the road with Billy Gunn. <laughs> the, the diners at 3 a.m. trying to find something to eat. And now Colton Gunn's in the ring, and Brock Anderson's in the ring. And those guys get to live that world too now. Hey, everyone thinks they can run the show. Now you get to prove it. AEW Elite General Manager is now available on Google Play and the App Store. Download it now. That's AEW Elite General Manager. And it's free, Tony. Absolutely. Download now. If you're like me, you hang out on your phone way too much. Way too much. And this is a great way to hang out on your phone. Can't wait to see these two athletes like up. Big Shotty Lee Johnson, Colton Gunn. This is going to be exciting. Yeah, this, this is a great young athletes and a veteran all together. Aubrey Edwards is your referee, and there's Colton. Colton's got to know. Broad smile. Boy, you can tell you know, who his dad is you by that smile. You <laughs> can't tell who his daddy is, can you? <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. But the fact is, Colton's got to know that his record is spotless. That is. It Spons. is. That's an incredible achievement. That is an incredible for, for anyone in AEW. Look at that big Shotty Lee giving it back to him. I love these guys. They're all in the same camp, a little competitive. I like it. A little competition's good. Colton is 22 0 in his wrestling career. Side headlock takeover. He's only been wrestling a little over seven months, I believe. He's, yeah, absolutely. And you're right, in his eighth month of wrestling. You know, that, 
That's amazing to see how far and how fast he's come along. And I tell you, that's the thing I've seen so many times throughout the years, is that young men and women that are born in a wrestling family, they just absorb it so much faster. You know, it's that unconscious confidence that they get just by being around the business. Nice deep arm draws by Colton Gunn, strong fighting stand. Bang, bang, bang. And much like Colton, Brock Anderson made his debut in AEW. He has not lost a match. Three matches and three wins for him. Sure made his dad proud, and here we go. Yeah, Colton Gunn's not standing yeah. around for that. That's smart, man. Yeah. And Billy on the outside just letting Colton go, buddy. As he should. Yeah, absolutely. As he should. You know, Billy's such a great teacher, such a great mentor. Right now, Colton's a little surprised on that one. You know, Brock Anderson's got a pretty smart old man, too. Yeah. Billy, Billy tagged himself in that time. And I think the fans want to see Billy Gunn and Brock Anderson. Well, they're going to see it, and Brock went for it. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to let him step in for free. Billy's like, come on, kid. That's not going to work right away. Anderson into a hammerlock. Into a side, close over to a side headlock. Put the brakes on. Wow, and Billy just tore the top of his cap off. He just got whacked. Yeah, he did. One thing you can't substitute is just meanness and honoriness. And we both know Billy Gunn's got a mean streak yes, when he, he gets does. fired up. He's got hands like a cement block. You shaking hands with Billy Gunn before, Tony? Yeah, he's a massive individual. Yeah, people don't realize how big he is. Yeah. He's got to be, what, 6'6", 275, 280? Just a monster. Brock Anderson in a little trouble here, stuck in the gun corner. Needs to get out of that corner and regroup a little bit. Basically what you have here, great snap suplex that time. Here's Colton floating over a one. Nice cover. You got basically the battle of the nightmare family. The gun club has been a staunch supporter of Cody and Dustin and the nightmare family. And then you've got Lee Johnson, who has trained at the nightmare factory, if you will. Same thing with Brock. Billy being very, very deliberate here with very Brock. Deliberate, very deliberate and very patient. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of times what people don't understand, even this competitive as this is right now, Brock Anderson's still learning. Yes, he is, and, and Billy knows that. Billy walks into an elbow that time after the foot. Brock got Anderson's showing he's got a little fire. Tag made on either end. Here comes Lee and Colton, and it's Lee Johnson with the first blow. And he sends Billy on the outside, and down goes Colton again. Boy, Lee is just Mr. Excitement. Super fast. Into a cutter. Quick. Here comes Billy. There goes Billy with a drop kick from Lee Johnson. Well, one too many times that time. Billy wants to step up in Zaguri that time from the outside. And missile drop kick from the top. Big shot of Lee Johnson showing athleticism. Colton Gunn trying to go for the Colt 45. And Lee. One, two, no, Colton the other way. One, two, three. He turned it on him. He did yeah, turn it on The Gun Club. How about that for him? Looks like Colton had a handful of tights on that, maybe. Wow, did you see that back? Yeah, I, I'm not so sure, boy. I think he had a handful of tights. It was, it was a great counter move. Colton Gun, by the way, gets his 23rd win without a loss. Take a look one, once more, one more time here, Paul. Rolled up. Nice roll up on. by Big Shotty. He oh, does. Colton Gunn pulls the tights. You are right, my friend. Well, that's kind of a surprise. And, and that's what Lee Johnson is saying right now. Billy said, no, my son wouldn't do that. But the gun, oh, watch out. Gun club get a win. The big man of Jurassic Express, Luchasaurus, against Fuego Del Sol. That's coming up next. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Mobile, Alabama. 
Alabama, weighing 165 pounds, Fuego Del Sol. Sometimes wow. excitement takes a life of its own, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. His opponent, weighing 275 pounds, Lucha Soros. As Lucha Soros makes his way to the ring, I want to remind you that we have dynamite like we've been talking about coming up Wednesday, and that of course is live at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland. Tickets are available for a Fighter Fest 2 night, or Fighter Fest night number two. Still available at AEWTIX.com. That's AEWTIX.com for the Curtis Colwell Center in a mere two days. Well, I gotta tell you what, Fuego Del Sol's got a lot to overcome to get a win over Luchasaurus. He's got an eight inch height disadvantage along with a 108 pound weight disadvantage. Okay, the fans are behind this kid though. How could you not be? You gotta yeah. love it. Yeah, Alabama's number one luchador. Recently got his first win in AEW. It's that power of Luchasaurus, just manhandling Fuego. He certainly made a name for himself on Sandy Guevara's blog, as you know. And they're chanting his name in Fuego. Oops. Using a springboard. And the big guy, oh my God, the big guy, look at this. That's an impressive, impressive power of Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus going all the way around to see who wants him, and Fuego falls and goes to the feet. Great strategy by the masked man. Definitely nice kick. Uh-oh, I think he woke the dinosaur up. Pick up. Oh, tried a tornado like DDT and just got hoisted. He was hoisted. And he was yanked right out of the air. Jungle Boy looking out. I think Jungle Boy feels bad for Fuego, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Choke <laughs> slam, choke slam flip into a knee to the face. Oh, man. The winner of this match, Lucha Soros. Luchasaurus gets a singles win, much like Jungle Boy did. Jungle Boy is checking on, on Fuego. Wow, just folded Fuego Del Sol right up right there. I mean, that athleticism and strength and power of Luchasaurus, a little bit too much for Fuego Del Sol, Alabama's number one luchador and the master of the Tornado DDT. Yeah, sure, I'm gonna hug you, buddy, after I put my knee in your face. Paul, I want to take everyone back to a dynamite this past Wednesday. I, an interview I did earlier with QT Marshall, and you see what he did, and, and I just want to apologize to everyone that they had to witness something like that. But, but that's QT Marshall. I'm so damn mad I can't even talk about it. Like, what does he gain from doing something like that? Well, the answer is nothing. Up next on Elevation Singles Competition, you don't want to miss Captain Sean Dean versus Dante Martin. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 196 pounds, the captain, Sean Dean. One of the real good guys in AEW. Class act all the way around. I'm kidding, Sean Dean. I want to remind everybody that, as you know, we talked about the next event being Fight, Fighter Fest Night 2. We've got Fight for the Fallen coming up in Charlotte. And that is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Wednesday, July 28th in Charlotte, Bojangles Coliseum. Tickets on sale now at AWTIX.com. Justin Roberts.
opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 195 pounds, Dante Martin. And before this match gets well underway, I, I, I can't explain the, the actions of, of QT Marshall. He just, he's become a bully. That's all I can say, Paul. You know, I've, I've never had that happen to me in all my years of doing this. Nor should you have. The lack of respect that QT Marshall showed you was just, that's pretty low and uncalled for him. I tell you, it's, it's certain things that people do that really gripe me and stick a thorn in my side. Right. And that crash that happened to you pisses me off. Well, well look, look I, 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 on a certain level, I get it. Because there's nothing, you know. I what? What can I do, right? I mean, I mean, what do you get by bullying an announcer? I don't know. Nothing. But guys like that, I just don't have any respect for whatsoever. That was just completely uncalled for. But I want to focus right now on Dante Martin and the captain Sean Dean. Just work on something positive. Absolutely, and there's a lot of positive there. Dante can do a lot of things. Flying crossbody, and he got a two count. Dante Martin and his brother. Of course, uh, sensational tag team rising to the ranks. And his brother Darius, of course, with a knee injury. And so, top flight down a little bit, but. Look at that athleticism yes, of the captain. And strength, too. Got that military background, so he's got that great upper body strength and core strength. And he's got them, those great wow. wheels. He's running a senton bomb that time and got a uh, two count out of that. And he's got now Martin reeling here. Sure does. Nice rear chin lock here. Notice how deep the captain's got that rear chin locked under Dante Martin. Really tough for Dante Martin to breathe right now. Smart. Now look at Captain putting all his weight on Dante Martin, help wear him down. That's smart. When you get an athlete like Dante Martin, you want to cut him down a little bit. Whoa, Whoa, big punch by Dante Martin. Man, talking about cutting him down. He blocked that one in the forearm shot. Just shows that fire that Dante Martin has. Sean Dean hit into the turnbuckle that time. Here comes Dante. Put the brakes on nicely. Oh, he is so quick. So smooth. Man, that was like one of the smoothest major moves yet. Yeah, that is smooth, man. You're right. And you see both ropes to the springboard. So Pick impressive. It. One, two, no. And Sean Dean got out of that. I didn't think he would, but he did. Great cover. A great core strength. Sean Dean right there got him out of that position. Flex those abs, kick those legs, get those shoulders off the mat. Good European uppercut. Good pump kick. Sean. Got really drilling it in there. The captain to a power bomb. One, two, no. Using those strong legs to power out of that. Well, it's funny. I look at Dante Martin move, and he's like a rubber band. He's so young and flexible. Sean Dean, a Chicago native, will be going to Chicago, of course, very, very soon, as you know, for three big events. Talk more about that as we move along here. And... The captain is all tied up here. He got packaged up on that one. Package one, two. No, sir. Two count that time. Well, let's tell you right now. Wednesday, September 1st, AEW Dynamite. Friday, September 3rd, AEW Rampage. And Sunday, September 5th, all out. The pay-per-view, which, by the way, is sold out. But you can still get tickets for the Chicago land area at Hoffman Estates with these three live events. Great little mover by Dante Martin right there before that happened. Cover. And he wins. And there's a pinfall. That winner was Mitch. Dante Martin. Dante Martin was trying to pull the captain off the ropes, realized the captain was holding on. So flexible, threw a heel kick in the captain's face to break it. Look at these moves. Just the athleticism and coordination is ridiculous. Flip over, stunner. Nice hook, great cover, great win. It can glide around the ring. And for young Dante Martin, the youngest competitor in AEW, another win, this time over Captain Sean Dean. Women's Tag Team Action coming up next. High Conte teams with Serena Deeb. 
the woman of a thousand holds. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Ty Conti. Always a delight to see Ty Conti in competition. Should be a great tag team matchup and a very unusual team. And her tag team partner from Oakton, Virginia, Serena D. Well, this is an unusual matchup. You know what? I'm excited to see it because both of these girls can go. The woman of a thousand holds and Ty Conti. Take a look at their records, 19 and three and five and one. You know, Ty Conti always gets me. She's so bubbly and fun, come to the ring and big smiles. And then she's like a lethal martial arts expert that's just gonna you know, kick your teeth and snap your elbows. <laughs> Let's go back to Justin Roberts for their and opponents. Their opponents, the team of Burt Vixen and Jasmine Allure. Burt Vixen, Jasmine Allure. That's a deadly combination. If Serena's got a thousand holds, but Ty's got a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So there's holds in that too. I want to remind you that AEW returns to Pittsburgh for two historic events at the Peterson Event Center on campus. First on Wednesday, August 11th, Dynamite will be live in Pittsburgh. Then two nights later, the debut of Rampage on Friday, August 13th, both in Pittsburgh. Tickets start at only 25 bucks for each event with special combo packs available. Tickets at AEWTIX.com. We're going to Pittsburgh, Paul. I can't wait. Steel City. Home of Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, our AEW Women's World Champ. At least she is right now, but she's got that title defense coming up against Nyla Rose coming up Wednesday live on TNT at Fighter Fest Night 2. And Serena gives a tag and nice. Nicely done that by Ty. Ty with explosive quickness. Bert Vixen, reversal. Foot up to the face. Always got to be careful with Ty with those feet because they're such loaded, dangerous weapons. One, two, and almost got a three count that time. She'll roll her, throws her up again with a good pinning combination, but only a two. She saw that coming. She grabs the arm. It's like a triangle sleeper. Yeah, it, it looks like it. And she rolls her through again. Oh, there's those judo throws. Look how Ty locks the elbow. Sure. Reaches Bob behind the elbow and locks it. You've got no choice. And there's the feet. Super kick for your trouble. Good go behind this time by Conti and Jasmine Lewis smart. Get Ty back in her own corner. Oh, man. Whoa, a hair takedown that time and a kick to the side of the head. Here's a cover. One, two, and Ty Conti gets out. Mike Posey, by the way, the referee here on elevation. Two days removed from another live event on TNT. This time for the Curtis Colwell Center right outside of Dallas and Garland. And look at this double team here. Yeah, Bert Dixon was smart. She got Ty Conti back in the corner. Gave Jasmine a chance to pull that hair from behind. Smart play on their point. And Keep their opponents. Oh, little miscommunication on that one. And Ty's going to stagger over towards trying to make a tag. She cannot. Well, a back kick got it. And a tag is made. And here comes the former NWA Women's World Champion. Look at the composure, Serena D. Just laying those shots in there. I don't think there's a better women's striker no, than I, Serena Deeb no, in AEW. I agree, and we've got some great strikers. Serena may be the best. Oh, boy. Burton Dixon with a kick, and no, then he... Serena Deeb gives her a shot back for a trouble. Whoa. Dragon screw leg whip on the ropes that time. Well, if you're going to play, you're going to pay. And we've seen Serena with a mean streak. There she goes to the leg again. She may be going for the serenity lock right here. Into Saw the midsection. She got the serenity lock on. And what a move that was. 
We're well, talking about a woman of a thousand holes and a thousand counters. The fans appreciated that. And why not? I don't know if I've ever seen that before, Paul. No, that was smart. That's just that veteran experience that Serena Deeb has. This is one of the things that Serena Deeb does that I love. Yeah. How she really works the knee over before she applies that hold. And the Serenity Here Lock wins winners. the match. The team of Ty Conti and Serena Deeb. Serena Deeb is definitely a master of her craft. Yeah, that's a pretty good team right there, Paul. Pretty lethal team. Yeah, if there were women tag team titles in this business, those two girls would have it. Ty Conte, Serena Deeb with the win. First time together as a team and a big win on Elevation. Up next on Elevation, your main event tag team action. The wingman's J.D. Drake and Cesar Bononi versus Penta and Eddie Kingston. No, 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 no! I am mad! I am about to lose my mind! I am mad! Cedar Park, Texas was supposed to be women's territory! But you guys don't see Ryan Nemeth here, right? You guys don't see Peter Avalon here as well! Because your stupid trash airport system did not allow them to be here right now! Now how are we supposed to give these people a makeover? How are we supposed to make them look pretty? We can we no da, no they come, no they change to, no da. Whoa, 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 whoa. What my big Brazilian friend is trying to say is even though the wingmen are not at full strength, we may not be able to make you pretty, we can damn sure make you ugly. Well now. Being accompanied to the ring by Alex Abra Hamptons at a combined weight of 442 pounds, the team of Eddie Kingston and Penta. Boy, is this a stock main event. Penta. This is crowd. They're so hot for Penta. It's great. Eddie Kingston, both walking around the ring. I love it. Wingmen aren't very happy tonight. Apparently, some of their party got hung up with travel, huh? Yeah, apparently, the, the kids from, uh, I say kids, the young athletes from California, uh, Ryan Nemeth and pretty Peter Avalon didn't make their flight, or their flight let them, I don't know. Who knows, but obviously the big Brazilian was, uh, was angry, and we appreciate uh, the interpretation from... I didn't understand a word he said. He great. Well, he was mad. By the way, I want to write, remind you that the all-new quarterly AEW subscription box, the All Elite Crate, Sign-ups at AllEliteCrate.com. $39.95 per crate or save five bucks when you sign up for the entire year. That's the All Elite Crate. Yeah, Cesar Pannoni was definitely upset. He was raging so bad, he was yelling in the microphone. He was cracking out. Two big, impressive athletes there. J.D. Drake, the blue-collar badass, and Cesar Pannoni. They said they can't make you pretty, but they can make you ugly. Well, Penta's like looking at a dragon sometimes, you know it? I said it before, and I'll say it many times, he is Mr. Offense. Boy, is he's all O. Yeah, he, I mean, he's, he's the is. big O. <laughs> I really think many times he has kind of revolutionized offense here in AEW, and, and I know there's been great luchadors that have done phenomenal things throughout the years. And yes, I've not seen them all, I get it. But from where I'm sitting, 
There's Pen nobody better than Penton. I have to agree 100% with that. Penton's just so versatile with his offense. Attacked from many, many different angles. Speaking of luchadors, what about Andrade El Idolo calling out Death Triangle? We're talking about Ray Phoenix and Penta and, of course, Pack. So apparently he has uh, set his sights, as the Oakland Shea goes, on Death Triangle. Well, you know what the Death Triangle says? What's that? Tom? No fear. No fear. Alex Eberhantes. All right, we'll do it again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? Please don't do it again. Oh, okay. oh we're doing it again. If, if, he's not going to catch it this time either. Third time's a charge. There you go. There you Third go. time's a charm, or rather. Okay. I should charge him with a felony for making me watch that three times. Okay, well, Alex is his interpreter. That's what that triangle says. No fear. Oh, Lordy. Wow, they helped Ben to bring that. I don't know, that's such a smart idea there, J.D. Hey, well, he turns right around, juts that jaw out. And there's three of them. Oh! <laughs> oh. There's a boot for your trouble. Rock in the head. Seto! Miato! And... Well, springboard. Crossbody. Nicely done. Wow. Little Hurricane Rana. Little Hurricane Rana that time. And, and a kick to the quads for good measure. And here comes Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston, thugalicious. There he is. You listen to the chant of Eddie. Really, Eddie Kingston is one of the great stories in pro wrestling. When you think about where he was just a couple of years ago, selling his boots, his wrestling gear just to pay his rent. And now what he has become. Fan favorite here in AEW. Absolutely. Doing what he loves and still paying the bills. Wow, look at that big Brazilian Cesar Bononi. He's getting upset. Oh boy. Boot. Wow. I would say there's a, a difference in body type in these two men. Yeah. <laughs> I would say Cesar's got one of the best bodies in yeah. AEW. Tremendous athlete. That doesn't always mean the best body's going to win or prevail. Well, Eddie gets we, out and won that time. We know that experience goes a long way to looking for him. Yeah. Let's not forget that Eddie and Penta recently snapped the Bucks' 15-match winning streak with that non-title win that they had on Dynamite. There's big boot by Benoni. What well, are we Eddie. just talking about, Tony, about Eddie Kingston, how his luck's turned around, and now there's crowds chanting Eddie Kingston. Yeah. But I love that. Good for him. Yeah, man, he's earned every bit of it. He, yeah. has, he has earned all the adulation of the fans. Oh. Back chop that time by the... Well, that just dropped Eddie Kingston right to his knees. That had to knock the wind right out of him. Blue collar badass now will send Kingston in. Kingston a little bit of trouble right here. Comes in big Cesar Benoni. Well, the wingmen don't have any wingmen out here with them, do they? They don't have any any second or third, or I would say third or fourth help here on the outside. Boy, Benoni is a big, impressive man, individual. He is really. You can tell there's been a lot of work put on that body. Look at the legs, and sometimes, you know, we, we look at the upper body, Paul, and we think, man, how strong he is, but look at the legs of Benoni. Big, long, strong legs. Big quads. I, know Pente, I mean, Cesar Benoni needs to be careful to get Eddie Kingston away from that corner. That's some mistake that younger wrestlers make every now and then, not ring awareness. You want to keep your opponent out of his corner, not within the reach to tag. Control your opponent.
Double team here, and Eddie. Boy, Cesar Benoni looks irritated, doesn't he? Yeah, man. He, well, he was, he was pissed off coming out, man. He sure is. He's fired up. Sometimes that temper can work to your detriment if you're not careful. Oh, man. Eddie wanted to. Eddie that time wanted to. He wanted to punch, J.D., but he really did. Look at Eddie. Gouge in the eyes that time, and Bryce Rimsburg warning. I guess. Oh, man. This is warning J.D. Drake. Yeah. Up, you need an open hand here. Into the corner. Oh, out. Leg trip and got him down like a. That was like a leg trip lariat. Yeah. Well done. Pinto wants to tag in, and Eddie's got to crawl across an opponent to get it. Mr. Offense needs to get in. Light this crowd on fire. Eddie's Eddie. trying to hold on. And here he comes. Hit to El Santo Miano with a sling blade. And another one. So quick how he does that. A little kick in the back of the leg for your trouble. And here goes Benoni sending him in. But Penta just amazing. Thrust kick. Forward roll up. Into a DDT. Talk about ring awareness. Again, offense. Um, just <laughs> He's lining him up like Jackie Chan. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. Cesar Brown took that big side kick right to the chin. Cesar's in a lot of trouble right now. All right, Pinto wanted to make sure Eddie was okay before he made the tag. Eddie said, yep, come on in. Double team, drop toe hold. Eddie holding him up. Wow. Boy, he got teed up for that one. That wow. was a line drive, 300 yards straight down the fairway. Great teamwork here. Drake. Both drop men. kick by Eddie Kingston. How about that? Eddie getting off his feet for that. Cover one, two, and Drake is still in this match. Well, Kingston's still feeling it. Look at that holding his lower back. Oh, Benoni came over and got that for his troubles. Benoni's on the wrong side of town. He really is, man. He, he, watch out, here comes Penta. Oh, my goodness, no! Holy smokes, that's just... That is, that is naughty. Wow. One. Oh, and it was. Yeah, it's not even Christmas yet. We don't need to see the Nutcracker. <laughs> I'm not so sure how much is left of uh, Drake here, but meanwhile, Benoni, angry as you talked about, still angry. Taking his wrath out on Eddie on the outside. Momentarily. Oh, and he got his pole to the face for his trouble. Steel pole right to Cesar Benoni's forehead. Drake trying to get up. Oh, there's that patented open slap. Fear factor, maybe? No. Eddie Drake's really big to attempt that fear factor. Now Drake rolls him up. He's got the rope, too. Oh, boy. Bryce saw it. Yeah, those big flashy boots, boots were kind of a glow-in-the-dark signal that yep. Peter on the ropes. Could have stolen a win right there, and now... A little flipper kick by J.D. Drake. Little pretty athletic. I love the little flipper kick. And now climbing to the top. Big man going for the moonsault. Look at this guy go for his size. He missed and thrust kick. Back fist. Has him hooked. Covers him with a one, two, three. He won't get up from it. Here are your winners. The team of Eddie Kingston and Penta El Cerro Miedo. Stretcher really yanks that shoulder out of socket. Nice nutcracker spot here, just like the Christmas play. He rips the shoulder out of socket. Good job by Penta. Offensive lethal at its finest. A reminder tomorrow night, AEW Dark here on our YouTube channel, and then we will see you on Wednesday night live from Garland, Texas for Dynamite live on TNT. What? You? Penta? Okay. What the
Buenas noches, Austin, Texas. Estoy muy feliz de estar con toda mi gente aquí en Austin, Texas. Gracias por venir y les prometo una cosa. AEW y Penta regresaremos con todos ustedes. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, one moment, one moment. Alex. says it feels great to be back here in Austin, Texas. And we cannot wait to come back here and have another AEW Dynamite with each and every one of you. We love you, Austin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Papi, last time I talked shit, I got in trouble, so I tried to be good. Okay, good? Tonight good? Okay, great, okay. Look, I'm gonna speak from my heart as I always do, but one second, one second, please. I'm telling y'all right now, God, it feels so good to see all of you. Your energy, everything tonight felt amazing. So thank you. She okay? Mommy, you good? You good? Okay, mama. You're the best. Look, AEW took a chance on me. AEW takes a chance on all of us. So that's why I talk my shit and I say AEW forever. So, in closing, if you ain't with AEW, then you ain't shit. That's funny, but I'm gonna say my little tagline and I want everyone to get home safe, please, because I want to see you guys again when we come back. So I'm gonna say my little New York thing. Tip your waitress, try the veal, get home safe. Thank you, everyone. Texas Ted. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite Live at 8 on TNT.